Hi, welcome to Management 1000. These are the video capture notes for lecture number three. Now we introduced the concept of uh, feedback loops in uh, this class and there's two flavors of feedback loops. We have balancing feedback loops which are stabilizing goal seeking and uh, trying to bring a system into some sort of equilibrium and then reinforcing feedback loops which are amplifying or enhancing loops and um, tend to throw systems uh, out in a particular direction and away they go. Sometimes known as vicious cycles and virtuous cycles. We'll see those in a moment. And again, the, the stuff from the notes is all in the books. This is figure 10 from Thinking in Systems and uh, we'll just annotate it up here. So, let me just grab my virtual pencil. Uh, if we have hot coffee temperatures up here and this is room temperature down here, right hot coffee will spontaneously, whoops, spontaneously cool down, something like this. And actually, hot coffee will cool off faster than warm coffee. So we have this cooling effect, laws of thermodynamics. This is just the heat going to the air, wherever it might be. We have room temperature, and then we have some discrepancy. The coffee's hotter than room temperature. So it cools off in this balancing loop, right? We're tending down toward this goal here. Now, if we had something like uh, iced coffee, for example, uh, we'll get rid of this annotation. And if we had iced coffee, right? Nice cold beverage. Um, it's going to spontaneously warm up to room temperature. So again, this is my room temperature here. And instead of cooling, we'll have a heating effect. It'll take heat out of the atmosphere. The discrepancy between the heat of the coffee and room temperature, right, will result in this kind of loop and it eventually will hit room temperature. So again, not a surprise there. So that's a, uh, an example of a balancing loop. Right, we're tending toward a particular goal, in this case room temperature. Now here's a, a reinforcing feedback loop. And this is again from figure 12 of Thinking in Systems. Uh, we have money in our bank account. And we have an interest rate and interest is being added and so on. The interesting thing about loops is that the stock impacts on the flow. The stock impacts upon the flow. So in the previous example, we had the amount of heat in a cup of coffee impacts upon the flow. Here we have the amount of money in a bank account impacts upon the flow. We have an interest rate, and it's going to start out fairly small. You have $100, say a 10% interest rate, it's going to go up to $110 up to 121 and eventually you'll end up with this exponential curve a long time later but we have this reinforcing loop so we have more money to gain interest and more money to gain interest and more money to gain interest and so it goes over time so there's a, a reinforcing feedback loop so it's important to look at systems and figure out does the stock influence the flow and if it does is it in a balancing fashion or a reinforcing fashion now, we have a couple of feedback loops in this case. We have balancing and reinforcing. And the stock we're interested in is a population. So uh, the example I gave in class was um, uh, bunny rabbits. This is my high-tech bunny rabbit. Give him a little cotton tail. There we go. Um, so we have rabbits, and they will reproduce in this reinforcing loop, and the amount of rabbits will impact on the birth rate as well other factors like fertility and so on and if left unchecked right rabbits will multiply those new rabbits will become of an age where they can multiply and so on and so forth on the other side we have a balancing loop right rabbits the amount of rabbits will will die off we have a death rate mortality rate and so on so we have this balancing loop so our population couple of different possibilities. If our birth rate exceeds our death rate, 
we'll have this kind of situation. And conversely, oops, we could have this kind of situation if our death rate exceeds our birth rate. So that's um, you know a single population with a bouncing loop and a reinforcing loop. There we go. Now the next thing that I wanted to uh, talk about was the different notation between uh, Meadows and, uh, and Sangi. One thing that uh, Meadows doesn't do is include information. So her flows are very physical. We have water flowing in, we have water in a tub, it's easy to see, we have water flowing out, again easy to see. Here in the Sangi notation again we have water flow um, that's easy to see. It's a physical thing. The current water level is easy to see physical thing. Desired water level though, this is information. The perceived gap is information. The position of the faucet is information. So we could map this physical flow to here and this physical stock to here. And then we have these information pieces. Right? So ignoring this stuff because this doesn't appear in this loop down here. You can see how we have some items in our system diagram which are information and some which are physical flows and stocks and so on. So that's just a mapping of those two notations. Okay. Peter Senge uses a slightly different notation for his reinforcing loops. Um, instead of using an R, he has this diagram. It's a little snowball rolling down a hill. You can see the uh, trees in the background. So snowball rolling down the hill represents his reinforcing loop and balancing loops are denoted by this little scale or balance which is in, in balance of course. And like I said before we have virtuous cycles and vicious cycles. These are reinforcing loops. Example from the news uh, might be your iPhone. Right. So I just got an iPhone, positive word of mouth. You tell two friends, there's an increase in sales, right? Everybody's happy with their iPhone, satisfied customers. They tell two friends, and so it goes. So we have this virtuous cycle. Alternatively, also in the news, uh, the bendy iPhone, the fact that you can take an iPhone and it might bend if you leave it in your pocket of your jeans. So you can have a situation like this. Oh, negative word of mouth. My iPhone just bent. Oh, I'm not going to buy one of those. Decrease in sales. Unsatisfied customers. They tell two friends. Negative word of mouth. And so it goes in this vicious cycle. And then we have a great Canadian example of a balancing loop down here. Um, right. You wake up in the morning. It's cool fall day, but it's going to be nice in the afternoon. You want your temperature, your body to be, you know, not too hot, not too cool. So you consider the temperature gap. Oh, it's cold this morning, so I'm going to put on some clothes. Your body warms up a little bit later in the day. Oh, it's too hot. You know, take off that hoodie, just wear a t-shirt. Ah, oh, body's good later in the day. Oh, cold again, put the hoodie back on. Right, we're always trending toward some desired body temperature. Might be too hot or too cold or so on. So we're heading toward this goal. So this is why this is a balancing loop. And finally, just want to talk about the balancing process with delay. Again, an example from the Senge book, page 123. So, in this example, we have a balancing loop. We turn on the, uh, the shower. Yipes! It's too hot. There's a delay between when we adjust the tap and when the water actually kicks in. And we might be adjusting the tap again and again and again. Oh, now it's too cold. Now it's too hot. You might have experienced this at one point in time until we finally hit that desired water temperature. So the desired water temperature is our goal. Yipes, it's too hot. Oh, now it's too cold. And then eventually we'll get it sorted out. The example I gave in class was that of a headache. So you have a headache condition. The corrective action is to uh, take two aspirin and call me in the morning. Now. There is a delay between when you take those aspirin and when the headache starts to go away. So you have to respect the delay part of the process. You have a headache, right? Take the two aspirin. It might not be the case the aspirin is going to work right away. So you don't automatically take two more aspirin. You wait for this delay to happen. So I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to do another video for the next set of notes.